I want you to think about the last time you were in a hospital. There's probably some things you remember. The smell of disinfectant in the air, the beeping of heart rate monitors and pagers, and the flurry of green scrubs and white coats rushing to a patient in need. Your heart was probably racing and your palms a little sweaty. You were nervous, either for yourself or for someone you were visiting. The hospital isn't a place we like going to for good reason. But what if we could make the hospital a place that doesn't instill fear and anxiety in most people when they walk in? When I was 18, I was getting ready for the next chapter of my life, college. But just three weeks after high school graduation, I was diagnosed with leukemia, a common pediatric blood cancer. That day, I checked into a hospital and I started treatment almost immediately. I was told I had a 60% chance of survival. And upon hearing this, I shut down. While my medical team was rushing to save my life, I couldn't help but feel that the other aspects of my well-being, like my emotional health, my environment, and even my dignity were going untreated. Being in, being in a hospital is a scary time for anyone, and we rely on our medical teams to hold our hands through the entire process. I felt like my medical team was unable to empathize with me. So under, while I was getting chemo, I slept for almost a week, and my parents were behind the scenes initiating a transfer to the local children's hospital. Cure rates for leukemia there are 90%, and because I was 18, I was lucky enough to pick where I wanted to go. But little did I know that a pediatric hospital would change my entire outlook on medicine and humanity. Think back again to the last time you were sick. How did you feel? And what did you do to make yourself feel better? Did you wrap yourself in a blanket with a warm bowl of soup while watching your favorite cartoons, movies, or shows? Or were you listening to some peaceful music while drawing or coloring on a canvas? When we're sick, we revert to our childlike state, and we turn to familiarity for comfort. And often that familiarity stems from things in our childhood that we enjoyed, like video games, coloring, or watching funny cartoons. Our environment and what we do in that environment influences how we feel both physically and mentally. And that can either be a powerful tool or detriment in the healing process. Now, there are some hospitals that have integrative services for patients, like cancer centers that offer nutritional and fitness support, acupuncture, and creative therapy. But that's not the standard in the adult healthcare industry. Uh, patients, th there's not really an emphasis on, getting, uh, on improving the state of a patient. Rather, you, we're trying to get them out of the door, right? But um, th there's, there's little emphasis on inspiring hope within patients and adding a little bit of play to their experience. When I was at the first hospital, which treated mainly older adults, the, so the somber tone in the air was palpable. Entertainment was non-existent, and the sterility of the white walls and lack of natural lighting did not only my mood, but the mood of all of my visitors. There wasn't much to do but sleep, and when I wasn't sleeping, I was just doing a lot of physical therapy. Now, this physical therapy included two things. I had to blow into a spirometer, which is a tube that patients blow into to prevent pneumonia and maintain lung function. And I also had to walk laps around the cancer ward wearing a stuffy face mask and a yellow gown reminiscent to a hazmat suit. I felt like a quarantine patient in a sci-fi movie. There wasn't much to do but sleep, and when I wasn't sleeping, I, I was just doing these exercises over and over again. My motivation and optimism quickly waned, and I was dreading the next three years at this hospital. But something magical happened when I transferred to the children's hospital. I felt like I was waking up from a deep sleep. Upon entering, I was struck by the brightly colored walls, sculptures, and large windows letting in natural light. Kids were being pulled in red clay wagons, and nurses were wearing cartoon printed scrubs. Unfortunately, this was also during the time of the Minions craze of 2015, <laughs> and Minions had quite literally taken over the hospital. But we won't get into that. And even though my brain was 
foggy from the last 10 days of chemo and trauma, I still remember my first day at the Children's Hospital clearly. I was on the cancer floor waiting for a room assignment when I spotted a small children's bicycle in the corner of the hall. I walked over, I sat on it, and I started pedaling up and down the hall wondering if there was a weight limit to this thing. The nurses were amused to see this fully grown teenager on a tiny children's bicycle. I cracked a smile and that was almost the, the first time in almost two weeks I showed any positive emotion. At that moment, I knew I had stumbled into something special. It seems like every day there was something fun to do at the children's hospital, whether it involved animals, music, art therapy. We had child life specialists whose sole job was to distract us while we were going through painful procedures or treatments. They could make crafts with us or play games, and I made silly putty quite a few times with my own child life specialist. And But there were visitors who would bring us gift bags full of toys, and during every overnight visit to the hospital, I was given the option of choosing a homemade blanket donated by volunteers. Now, at the time, I had developed an aversion to the standard green blankets you would see on hospital beds. I had started associating them with my nausea, and it's a pretty common phenomenon with cancer patients. We associate our, things in our visual environment with our nausea. So imagine my relief when I walked into my hospital room one night during one of my overnight stays, and there was a rubber ducky printed blanket already on my bed. The nurses had remembered my aversion and they'd switched the blankets before I even showed up. And every night I'd be given a small bottle of Baby Johnson shampoo. And that shampoo would pull me right back to my childhood and really calm me down before bed. It was these things like the blanket, the shampoo, that really made my overnight visits more tolerable. Now remember the spirometer I mentioned earlier? Well, I sought to do something similar at the children's hospital. But this time it involved bubbles. I was blowing bubbles to prevent pneumonia. Please hold your applause, I know I was a model patient. <laughs> but in reality, medical teams do use blowing bubbles as an incentive to get kids to take their medicine and to do their physical therapy. Riding bikes or blowing bubbles were so much more fun than the exercises I had to do at the first hospital. At this point, my motivation was quickly rising, and I was actually excited to blow bubbles or ride bikes if it meant that my health would be protected. Now, working with kids requires a lot of patience and sensitivity, and children's hospitals go above and beyond to provide the kind of service you would get at Disneyland. It's really hard for kids to be in a hospital room all day when they should be out on the playground with their friends, which is why it's so crucial for pediatric hospitals to feel like an extension of children of Disneyland. When kids need a sense of normalcy in the form of play, because it lets them just be kids again and forget that they're a patient in a hospital. A common slogan of children's hospitals is, the child first and always. But that's not a sentiment shared by most hospitals. Instead, a common mentality seems to be the disease first and always. Well, patients are made up of more than just their disease. An illness is devastating, but we don't need to be in environments that emphasize our devastation. The time has come to rethink our idea of what a holistic healing environment should look like in order to optimize the patient experience. A holistic healing environment is one that promotes the nurturing and healing of both the mind and the body. And this isn't about using alternative homeopathic remedies like herbs, crystals, or even foregoing modern medicine. On the contrary, physicians use elements of holistic healing to complement patients' treatments and encourage positive responses. We already see concepts of this emphasized in pediatrics, but it's still largely absent in adult spaces. To truly optimize medicine, we need to implement holistic healing environments for all patient-focused groups. Now there's two elements to holistic healing environments. One is architecture theory, which focuses on the physical structure and layout of hospitals. And one is interactions, which encompass the patient-caregiver relationship and all the social connections made within the hospital. There's a science behind the way that buildings are constructed and how they affect people. The way that hospitals are built can actually impact a patient's medical experience. And what I mean by this is that a hospital's layout, like 
the number of windows, the ease of navigation, and even the number of seating spaces can positively impact the patient's healing responses. I knew there was a night and day difference for how I felt when I made the hospital switch. And so I started reading more about hospital design. I encountered Dr. Roger Ulrich, an architecture professor who found that window views in hospitals led to decreased blood pressure and stress. And that led to even more studies verifying the benefits of architecture, creative therapies, and even healing colors like blue and green, and how these things can impact a patient's mental and physiological health. Now, nature is a key component of these healing environments, and hospitals go out of their way to design gardens or have used to gardens. But children's hospitals take a little bit more of a creative route. The, uh, children's hospitals have partnered with the San Diego Zoo, where they make, uh, they, they, make the, they make this TV show just for pediatric patients, because they want to bring the healing power of animals to sick children who need it the most. And take it from me, these adorable and informative videos are hugely successful in distracting patients from their scans or getting needles poked into them. This is how we need to be thinking about adult medicine. Now, there are some companies in the US that are trying to shift the paradigm of health to benefit adults. Perkins and & Will and Mass Design Group are two architecture firms that are trying to improve the social impact of built environments by changing the way that we design and construct hospitals. Perkins & Will actually created a cancer infusion bays that have direct views to wooded areas and have natural lighting. But Mass Design Group conducted a study with Harvard they found that having more operating rooms and fewer labor rooms led to more C-section deliveries. Well, that led to $5 billion in wasted spending and unnecessary complications for patients after surgery. That led to Mass creating a guideline for future hospital architects on how to design for optimal care in childbirth. Now, a hospital's architecture can facilitate positive social interactions using the concept of social design. Social design is a concept that focuses on rethinking the role of a building during a patient's healthcare journey. In pediatric hospitals, they have private rooms for patients and shared spaces for social interaction. These include game or music rooms. Music's not only good for mental health, but it's been shown to reduce blood pressure, heart rate, and even improve cardiac output. But unfortunately, these social design concepts of privacy or shared social spaces are still lacking in adult healthcare. Instead, adults share rooms and they have no intentionally built spaces for socialization. And that lack of socialization for patients who have few visitors and few meaningful interactions with their medical team can be detrimental to their healing. So social isolation can lead to suppressed immune function. For some reason, we think that because adults are older, they don't need the same frills or sensitivity to give to children. But being older doesn't mean you're immune to pain and loneliness. Visiting hours for pediatric hospitals are typically much longer, and parents can stay by the bedside of the child through the entire night. That's because pediatric hospitals are designed for both the patient and the family. Adults don't get the same consideration. Adults Adults need rooms for their families as well because it's been shown that having families around, even for adults, can actually decrease recovery time and decrease hospital duration time. Humans are communal and we rely on each other during times of hardship. Adults need their social support systems, especially in times of healing. Now, entering a hospital can trigger some unpleasant feelings from just about anyone. For me, when I'd enter a hospital for three years, I would, get, I would get slapped in the face with that stench of the hospital, and I would get immediately nauseous. But thankfully, pediatric hospitals are proactive. Uh, by, they're proactive at preventing this by adding experiences or activities for children so that they're not really focused on the hospital environment itself. Whenever I get MRIs done, I was given a headset with movies to watch. And they weren't just any movies, they were movies I got to pick out. Thankfully, I didn't watch any minions. But if you've gotten MRIs done, you know that they can take hours, they're extremely loud, there's alarms blaring in your ear while you're getting them done. And they can just get really hot and claustrophobic. 
But when you're watching movies, your senses are engaged, and you're not really focused on those discomforts anymore. The Ohio Children's Hospital actually created this interactive forest for kids to have a happy escape and forget that they're in a hospital. And on an even smaller scale, hospitals incorporate things like aquariums into procedural waiting rooms because they want kids to see that there's more to a hospital than just scary procedures and needles. They want kids to think of the hospital as a fun place with activities and new friends to meet. But we don't give the same consideration. Well, we, we design for kids, we design for kids by indulging their environments, by indulging their imaginations, but we don't give the same consideration to adults. But this isn't a call to design adult hospitals that look like children's playgrounds because we don't need more minions in the hospital. But I do think that we need to focus more on adding spaces for families so families feel more like a part of the uh, patient's treatment journey. And even just adding more natural green spaces in a hospital because patients need something to take their mind off of things. Healing spaces are not just aesthetically pleasing or pleasant spaces, but they're meant to encourage and empower patients during their treatment process. We still have a long way to go before this, this is a reality for all adults. We need, to, we need to rethink the conditions in which we treat our patients and how we interact with them when they're at their most vulnerable. Implementing these, implementing these holistic health solutions will be no small feat. It's going to require collaboration between hospital administrators, healthcare providers, patients, and their families. There needs to be direct input from architectural firms and patients so that they can, they can, dis, they can create more holistic healing spaces. Changes can be added gradually by adding natural lighting, colors, and even more compassionate medical care. Because it doesn't take money to treat someone as compassionately as you would treat a child. As a patient, you can implement change by talking to your healthcare providers on how to implement more services to relax you through the hospital. Or you can just find hospitals that already offer these integrative services. And as a healthcare professional, you need to advocate to hospital administrators the need for more holistic healing spaces by shifting the design, practice patterns, and even mission of a hospital. Maybe I would have been okay being treated at either hospital, but I attribute my fortitude, my resilience, and my optimism to the children's hospital that motivated me to keep moving forward. I was anxious during the entire treatment, and that took three years. But I knew that my medical team had my back. I knew that they were holding my hand through the entire process. Hospitals need to inspire hope when all hope seems lost. It doesn't take much to implement color or compassion. All it takes are people who care. Thank you.